Guitar practice session 91924. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I go over whatever I feel like I need to be practicing and then recap it so you know what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap. Practice sessions hopefully helping me to put together a routine, verbalize what I am working on, which hopefully helps to get it in my mind, possibly providing resources for other people who are working on similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to practice the things that I am practicing here. I'm going to be using my Excel worksheet. I do think that putting together presentations to try to verbalize what you're working on is very useful. So if you want to use these worksheets, don't worry about plagiarism or anything. You can do whatever you want to with them, possibly making your own uh, presentations, which I think is useful even if no one else is listening to the presentations because it helps you to kind of articulate what it is that you're basically working on. These worksheets are going to have our fretboard, the low or heavy string on top that's being a little bit different than some other guitar worksheets that you might be working with. My idea being here is that I want everything basically going the same way for those people that might be a little dyslexic like me out there that they have everything needs to go the same way. All right, so I'm behind the guitar. Behind the guitar, I've got the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling on top, top to bottom, left to right, which is mirrored on our uh, fretboard here. And then when I put my guitar on the screen, I'll flip it around so it looks like I'm left-handed so that you can follow along from the same perspective, basically, as though you were behind the guitar playing the guitar, everything being from top to bottom, left to right, uh, going the same direction. So this time I'm playing on what I would call uh, shape number two. That's a generic shape. I'm working on different kind of ways to, to name the shapes of the car guitar, both so that I can explain them to other people and talk to other people, but also because that helps me to kind of rotate these ideas around in my own mind and and see them in different ways. So I'm, I'm going to name this shape based on just shape number two, which is kind of a convention that many people use. I might call it a, a C shape based on the cage con uh, convention or just because it starts on the C or I might call it mode one, the Iolian mode because it starts there and we'll talk about some other conventions. Now I'm going to be looking at the Mixolydian, which I would call kind of like a bluesy mode in that it has a major mode, but it's got that flat seven, which makes it kind of like the minor and so uh, we'll talk about that. I'm going to give it absolute mode numbers, meaning it's absolute mode number five. I try to keep those unchanging as they relate to the master key for us. That being the, that's like the Rosetta Stone, right? I'm comparing everything to the Rosetta Stone, the unchanging stone, uh, even though in reality they all are tied together in in more of like a fractal type of structure, right? But I need to orientate myself, therefore the C, or, or I'm sorry, the Ionian is going to be mode number one, and I'm going to make an absolute numbering system compared to that. That means that Mixolydian compared to that would be uh, mode number five, and it's a, it's a major mode indicated by the capital letter here. So we're going to be on Mixolydian, which I can still have the first through seventh positions related to Mixolydian, but I'm going to name them in terms of their absolute modes as they relate to our master key Rosetta Stone, the major scale mode number one, otherwise known as Ionian. So then we'll go through this and we'll, we'll find where my roots are in the shape for Mixolydian within this shape number two. We will then uh, look at whole steps and half steps. We'll look at the intervals here, the one interval being different, being the 10 note away minor seventh, that being the one interval different from the major scale. And we'll do that going forwards and backwards and then kind of around the horn. And that's basically what we'll do, similar to recent prob or exercises I've been doing. And then I'll kind of noodle around in Mixolydian, discussing my viewpoint on the different ways people kind of view the bluesy scale, which is Mixolydian kind of fits into. So I think that's an interesting thing to kind of think about because like I say, if you try to watch someone and get instructional videos on the blues, 
you'll end up seeing all these people have these different ideas of what even the blues kind of thing means. Does it mean just a one, four, five progression, minor blues, major blues? Are you, what, what are you even playing? Are you playing in the minor scale or the major scale? You're using the minor scale and you're playing it with a major scale because you're kind of tweaking the minor scale to a major scale and or you're saying that you're in the major scale when really it looks like you're flatting the five which means it kind of looks more like you're in the mixolydian scale are you using you know uh, our normal caged shapes or are you basically using the three note per string caged shapes to do things like shuffle patterns and whatnot so i actually think i mean to me the the blues the major scale blues in particular is quite confusing when you try to analyze it like that there's a lot of like a there's a lot of like uh, conventions that you can use, like I guess maybe kind of shortcuts, which you know you can call them just mental mentally ways you're gonna approach the thing. But when you try to break it down, it's like man, there's a lot of different ways that people seem to be visualizing this in their mind. So I think that's interesting. So I try to you know think about that. I'm not a, I'm not. It's not something I've. I'm totally under. You know, I'm not. I'm just, these are my practice sessions. I'm not perfect on it either, but I play with it mainly in the key of uh, A, uh, A major. And I kind of mess with that a little bit because that's where I'm used to playing. Even though here in our practice sessions, we've been looking at Mixolydian with regards to the G. Okay. Continuing on with what I would call shape number two, looking at the absolute mode number five, that being the Mixolydian mode within it. Remembering that I'm applying absolute mode numbers, which you might not see everywhere, but I think it's highly useful to do because it helps us to orientate ourselves. I'm using the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode as the key, saying if that's gonna be absolute mode number one, then related to that would be absolute mode number five, the Mixolydian mode. So in other words, I'm in the key of Mixolydian. I can count out one through seven, the notes within it, the first, the second, the third, and so on. And then I can also tie those out to the related modes, which I'm giving absolute mode numbers, this time focusing in on the Mixolydian mode. And the mode number will give us a number as related to the major scale, also providing us information about whether it's gonna be a minor mode or a major mode. In this case, it's a major mode, given the fact that it has an uppercase uh, uh, number here. What does it mean to be a major mode? That means that it has a major third as opposed to a minor third. And therefore, what we will typically do is take our, our major scale as well as our main minor scale, the Aeolian minor scale, and compare the related majors and minors to them. So anything that has a major third, we will compare oftentimes to the Ionian or major scale, and there will only be one difference. Any of the minor modes, we would compare to the main minor or Aeolian. So if I compare this Mixolydian to the major scale, the Ionian scale, there's one difference, as there will always be in these modes, there's one difference to the related mode, whether it be major or minor. And in this case, that's going to be the minor seven. So it has a minor seven in it, which gives it kind of that bluesy flavor. So this is the mode that would give us kind of like a, a bluesy type of flavor because of that uh, minor seventh, which is kind of interesting. Now, remember, the whole bluesy thing's a little bit weird because people approach it from all kinds of different angles because you could first of all you could have minor blues and then uh major blues and whatnot and you could define it as a one four five progression uh, oftentimes if you're talking about the a uh, major uh blues type of situation people people talk about playing it uh with basically our normal shape here but then augmenting it so they actually use like what i would call a minor shape and then adjust it to the major shape, which means you can play it in two kind of two places, that same kind of shape in two places, but augment it. Other people think of it as a major scale, and then they, they throw in that flat seven, and they play around uh, with the flat seven and the not flat seven, uh, and and then and then and then you can also think about it as basically being in mixolydian, which is the mode that has the flat seven in. So we'll we'll maybe discuss a little bit of that. Uh, as we go here as well. So that's gonna be the general idea. Now the position over here, uh, when I look at the position, 
uh, I named this position. I'm trying to think of different naming conventions so I can communicate it with other people that might use different conventions, but also just so I can get it straight in my mind and think of it from different angles. So remember, generically, a lot of people call this position position one, which a lot of people learn in the key of A because it's not, or A minor because it's right in the middle of the guitar, which means this would be position number two. So naturally, that would be position number two. Uh, but a lot of people also like to name it using the caged system. And if you use the caged system, notice I can't really say, well, this I'm in mixolydian. I'd have to say, what's my related major? Well, if I'm in G uh, mixolydian, the related major is going, going to be a C. And then I can look on the shape and say, well, if I built a, a, a shape in here for my, for my three note major scale, it would look like that. It only has three notes in it right here. Even though I'm playing five strings, I play all five, but it has repeating notes. And that would be basically my E major. So some people will call this shape, name the shape according to the cage system after an E major shape, even though we're playing a C chord here. Some people really like that. I think it's a useful convention. Other people get frustrated with it because now you're naming chords by shapes like you're calling it an E shape even though it's a C chord and whatnot that can get a little confusing but there's no perfect way to do it so that that is one a good anchoring weight now I'm trying to think about I, I could also call it uh, uh, just a C this would be my major shape like I would think of this as my normal major shape because I'm looking at the top string and saying if I start from the top string this would be where I would go if I was gonna play a major scale from the top string at the top of the, the shape. But it's a little confusing because usually the top shape is on the first note of the shape. Like over here, it's an A minor because it's the first note of the shape. But over here, the first note of the shape is actually a B. So when this, this, this is where I really got messed up on learning these shapes when I first started because I would play this shape from top to bottom. And it would be like, I don't really like that shape. It's like, why not? Why don't I like it? Well, it's probably because I'm I'm playing it like it was in Locrian, <laughs> right? Or or right because I'm using the B here as the starting and ending point of my shape, uh, which makes it which makes it difficult. It's difficult to play in Locrian. That's the weird one. So we really so so then how can I name it? If I was using a name convention, I might call this note number two. Uh, this might be the note number two major shape, right? This is the note, so meaning it's the, it's the shape that has the second note from the top of the shape being uh, the major shape. So I'm gonna call that a note number two, note two major shape. Okay, so that, and that'll indicate that, that it's my major shape and that it starts on, on the second note of the shape. All right. And now using that same convention, no one does this that I know of yet, but I think uh, I could try to name each shape by mode. So I could then say, well, this, what I'm looking right now is the mixolydian mode in what I would call shape number two, generically shape number two, or my major shape. The mixolydian is one, two, two, three, four, five, six notes up there. So I, I might call that, you know, note six uh, shape, note six mixolydian shape right meaning it's it's the shape where the mixolydian is the sixth note up on the shape now that might be a little wonky for to, to kind of but i think it's might help for me to kind of understand these shapes because then i can basically name the shape each shape by mode and that might help me wrap my mind around it so i'm experimenting with that uh at the moment okay so then well what if i I'm on this shape. I'm like, okay, this is a C uh, major, and I know that this is my major shape because it has my bar chord. And I'm trying to get to the mixolydian. How do I get to the mixolydian in the first place? Uh, well, I can say, well, I know that the C is the first, and mixolydian is absolute mode number five. It's the fifth of the major. That's why those absolute mode numbers are useful. So if I, st if I was to start on the one, I could just count up this shape until I get to the five. So I'd say this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five. Boom, there it is. So now I'm on the mixolydian if I start from that one. And then I could also say, well, uh, another way I can think about it is I can say, well, 
the the mixolydian is the fifth of the major scale and a fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth that's what it is on the so if i count up seven notes it would be here'd be five six seven so i can count it up that way that's another way that i can do it i can also look at my shapes and say okay let me i'm going to my story here here's my story about the shapes so you'll, re you'll remember that in the shapes you have the square double stop you've got the double stop square and then you got the two note per string what i call meat of the hamburger and then we're back to the square double stop these shapes repeat every time every time we cut up the fretboard in this way these that's why it's really useful to see these shapes and i i want to point this out because a lot of people like when i first learned this like i said i learned this shape from the b right <laughs> so i was playing in locrian and i could only play it from top to bottom so if i was playing like something down here i had to recreate the shape from the top to get to the what i was playing down here that's not that's not good uh, it would be easier if I can chunk this out into smaller bits so that I can see, I can start my shape from down here, right? And then see how, and I can start from the middle of the shape and try to be able to visualize it from smaller points. So it's it's useful to itemize, to atomize it down, right? To to chunk it down to smaller bits. So So that, and then those small bits are useful not only in one shape, but then they carry forward the same shapes are going to be in all of our five chunks of the guitar, right? So now we're just chunk, we're just breaking it down into smaller components. So so uh, so that's what we'll do. So in this house here, I'm calling this the box or the house. These ones that live in here, they always live in there. They don't move. They stay in here. So we've got the the C is at the top right of the house. It looks towards the ocean, which is the hole up here. This is my story, and then underneath it down here we've got the lydian which is also a uh, a major mode so it's also at the front of the house it's not in the penthouse but it's still at the front and it has uh the ocean view up here because that's the lydian and then at the back of the house you've got in the attic right behind it here the one that people don't really go to all the often because you have to go up in the attic and it's hot and hot up there and whatnot even though there's some good stuff up there it's been stored away so that's the locrian crazy locrian and then underneath that then you've got the uh the phrygian which is a minor mode and it hangs out in the basement it's like the rock and like the metal rock per one that has that flat second and it just bothers uh Lydian in the basement over here and then the other miners hang out outside of here and they kind of travel they're not always in the same spot like so you've got the Dorian over here uh, that's going to be see it hangs out with sometimes the the G this 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 one underneath it is actually the Mixolydian which is a major mode but it's the blues mode that has the flat seven which is why it hangs out with the miners and then over here the dorian when it's down here it's also in in the two note the like the double stop but down here it's on the bottom floor instead of the top floor and it's hanging out with the main minor mode over here and then you've got the mixolydian which again that's what we're on here although it is a major mode it doesn't hang out in c's penthouse over here because it's like dude i gotta do my own thing man i gotta do my own thing and so it's like it hangs out and it's got the flat seven so like i say it's hanging out with the dorian over here and then down here uh, on the on the bottom bit it's in the two note per string meat of the hamburger it's in the flat uh with the one story building hanging with the main minor the main minor the minor scale okay so the, so you can name it so you could find it that way so where are my notes in here we're here and then we're down here uh, wait a second here now notice that this when I get up to this these two octaves it's 12 no notes away but it's a little bit tricky there because the earthquake fault line is right there so this one has been shifted up so it's 5 10 15 14 13 12 okay so all right so that's cool and then we're gonna say let's just analyze this shape right here it starts on 
we start on the bottom of the double stop part of the house double stop, boom, and then it goes to the top of what I'm calling the the uh, the double stop square shape, duh, duh, duh. and then it goes to the bottom of what I call the double stop square shape, and then it goes to the two note per string hamburger, which is shifted up because of the earthquake. That's where the fault line is. It's shifted up to right there, boom. All right, so if we count that out then, the mixolydian, we're gonna say this is gonna be one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you can hear where that set, where that minor seventh is, right? So it's gonna be, uh, where was that again? It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that seven is, is where the flat seven is, which might sound a little bit wonky if you were expecting to hear like a major scale at that flat seven. It also is interesting of the majors doesn't have the leading tone. So we have the, ma the major scales being the, obviously the Ionian or, or the major scale. And then we have uh, the Lydian, which still has that leading tone. And then the mixed Lydian doesn't. So it doesn't have that distinctive majory leading tone that goes back home uh, here, which is kind of, again, somewhat distinctive of the mixed Lydian. All right, let's count out the, the holes and half steps. If we go from the first of the mixolydian to the second of the mixolydian, it's a whole step. If we go from the second of the mixolydian to the third of the mixolydian, it's a whole step. If we go from the third of the mixolydian to the fourth of the mixolydian, there's our half step. Notice we're in the box now. That's where the half steps are. If we go from the fourth of the mixolydian to the fifth of the mixolydian, that's going to be a whole step. And then if we go from the fifth of the mixolydian to the sixth of the mixolydian, that's a whole step. And then when we go from the sixth of the mixolydian to the seventh, that's a half step. And that's the funny one, because that's going to take us to the funny interval, remembering that each of these modes has one interval that's funny in comparison to its related mode, the major or minor, in this case, the major. So that means it has to have a, a different step to get into that one. And then to get back to normal right after it, it's going to have uh, from the seven back to the eight or one, another funny step in this, in this case, it being a whole step to get back instead of a half step. And that's why we don't have that leading tone, that half step that goes home that gives you that leading tone. Okay, so then let's do our good old uh let's just do our 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 intervals so we'll do the intervals so we're going to go from so if i went from this g to this a the second of a mixolydian like most modes except for that weird phrygian and possibly the 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 uh, locrian the crazy one you've got a two note away major second. So two note away major second, 10 minus two is uh, 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 12 minus two is 10. So the other way would be a 10 note away uh, uh, minor seven. So remembering that the inverse of the major is a minor. So if I go, if I'm getting this, trying to get this sound in my head, two note away major second. If I went from the A to the G, that's a 10 note away minor seven. How do I know that? Because I can count up here, this would be five notes between each string, four, three, two. And so that's where I get to the two and then 12 minus two is 10. I can see it this way if I went from this A and went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, I'd get to a G. So if you saw it in a circle, then you can go one way would be, you know, it has to add up to 12, right? So that's so you can, so you can kind of visualize it in a circle. All right, so then I'm going to go to the third. Oh, wait, let's also think about the modes. So if I'm on the second mode, so rem remember I'm calling the mode absolute mode number five as it relates to the major scale, which I really think is useful to do because then I can kind of figure out. Uh, so it, it, this is the first of the mixolydian, 
which starts on what I call absolute mode number five, which is the Mixolydian, right? And the fifth of the Mixolydian is the fifth of the related C major scale, which means it's actually four notes away, because if I start on the first one, the first of the C major scale, I have to go up three steps or four steps to get to the Mixolydian. Therefore, the formula is five minus one or four plus whatever I'm on, I'm on the second, four plus two is six, that gets me to absolute mode number six, which is the Aeolian mode, otherwise known as the main minor mode, the main minor scale. We can see it's minor because it has a lower case here. We can see that the minor is not, of course, hanging out in the house because it's the minor. The only minor hangs out in the house is the, the Phrygian that's in the basement. So it's over here hanging with its, its other minor mode, the Dorian in the two note flat here, but then it moves over here and hangs in the f in the one note flat with the uh, with the mixolydian. Okay, that's the story. So now let's go to the third. We're going to the third. Do, do, do. And so the third of a mixolydian is a four note away major third. Four note away major third. How do I know that? Because I can count down. This is going to be five, four. And the inverse of that is going to be 12 minus four, which is eight, which is a eight note away uh, minor six. So when I see that shape, that shape should, I should think in my mind, unless it's in the earthquake, the fault zone down here, it should be a four note away major third. But if I went the other way, therefore, eight note away minor six, all right? And so then I'm gonna go, oh, and I know that the third of absolute mode number five, mixolydian is five minus one, which is four plus three, which is gonna be four, five, six, seven. Mode number seven is the crazy Locrian mode. And you can see it's right behind the C, but it's actually in the attic. I, I call it in the attic because that's the crazy one uh, uh, that's, that's, that's in, in, in the attic. Okay, let's do the, do the next one. Uh, now we're on the fourth. The fourth of the Mixolydian is a five note away perfect fourth. How can I prove that? Because it's five notes between the strings. So five note away perfect fourth is just these two. And so the inverse of that would be 12 minus five, which would be seven, seven note away perfect fifth. Remembering that the perfects are inverts of each other. So if I see that shape, I should be, I'm generally thinking just those two, boom, boom, that's a perfect fourth, five note away perfect fourth, unless it's on the fault line uh, down there where the earthquake happened. But if I go the other way, seven note away perfect fifth from C to G, therefore all right and so let's go to the next one if or oh, wait a sec the fourth of absolute mode number five mixolydian is five minus one is four plus four is eight and there's only seven modes so eight minus seven is one that gives us absolute mode number one otherwise known as the ionian mode otherwise known as the major scale and it's of course hanging like it always does at the top of the hamburger it doesn't have to leave that penthouse much things go to the, the stuff goes to it, the stuff goes to the major scale because it goes, he just hangs in the house up there staring at the ocean and playing his major scale up there. So then we're gonna go to the next one, uh, which is gonna be the fifth. So the fifth of the, the fifth of uh, the mode number five, Mixolydian, is going to be a seven note away perfect fifth like most modes because it has the perfect fifth and so how can I, how do i know that because i can say well if i start from here be five ten nine eight seven so the inverse would be 12 minus seven which would be five five note away perfect fourth so if i see that shape i'm thinking five note away i mean yeah five seven note away perfect fifth and the inverse therefore because the perfects are inverts of each other, five note away, perfect fourth. We also know that the fifth of absolute mode number five, mixolydian, is five minus one, which is four, plus five, which is nine. It's only seven modes. Nine minus seven is two. That gives me absolute mode number two, otherwise known as the Dorian mode, minor mode, given by the fact that it has a lower case over here, therefore it doesn't hang in C's like mansion up here. It's hanging down here in, in the double stop two story uh, place with uh, the main minor, minor scale. 
All right, and then we're gonna go to the next one, which is the sixth. So then we're on like the sixth, duh, duh. and that's gonna be the sixth of mode number five. Mixolydian is a <clears throat> is a, a nine note away major six, nine note away uh, major six, and how do I know that? Because I can go. This is gonna be five, ten, nine, twelve minus nine is three therefore when i see this shape i'm saying oh that's a nine note away that's a nine note away major six but the inverse of that therefore is gonna be uh uh a three note away minor third okay and then that's what i say when i see that that's what i say and we also know that the sixth of absolute mode number five mixolydian is five minus one or four plus six six seven eight nine ten there's only seven modes, so that's going to be set 10 minus 7 is 3, which gives me absolute mode number 3, otherwise known as the Phrygian mode, a minor mode. That's the heavy metal mode, at least that's how I think of it. I'm not, I'm not sure, totally sure on that, but it hangs out down in the house in the basement bothering Lydian because there's, there's a fairly thin wall, especially when you got that amp blasting, and Lydian is like, dude... Just calm down just calm down all right with your amplifier okay let's go to the next one so now we're going to be on the next one which is uh the uh the seventh of mode number five uh mixolydian is going to be the funny one because that's the bluesy bit of it it's got that 10 note away minor seven making it more like the minor modes with that seven one and 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 i can see that because if i count up it's going to be five ten twelve minus ten is two and therefore the inverse is a two note away major second so if i went from this shape if i see this shape i'm usually thinking all right that's a ten note away minor seven but if i invert it going from the bottom to the top that's going to be a two note away major second okay and then we've got the whole step going back, uh, back up to the octave. Okay, so we'll, now we're going to go in reverse. But before we do, let me test out my jokes. I have to test my material here. Okay, this is this. Is, so, have you ever heard someone say they are apolitical? I mean, honestly, I mean, I I don't think there's such a thing as as apolitical. You know, I think I think it's just like a sentence fragment at this point. It's like it's like apolitical, a apolitical what? You know, complete complete the sentence, please. Yeah, it, it's it's especially frustrating when news media when the news media does it. You know, they're like, this is not an opinion section. This part of the news is apolitical, and it's like, dude, c considering. You stopped mid sentence. I assume I assume you're just leaving it up to us to complete the sentence fragment that you just left hanging there. You mean you mean your news company is a political hack, you, right? Because to because to fill it, would you gotta fill in the blank? Fill in the, is this a fill in the blank test you're giving me? Your your news company is a political cesspool of crime and villainy. Is that is I'll fill I'll fill in the blank if you want me if you're gonna just leave it hanging like that I'll fill in the blank, anyways a political, more like political a, a for a holes anyway whatever dude let's get back to it let's get back to it we're going back the other way now so now I'm gonna go all right so if we go the, back the other way. We're gonna say, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> we're we're gonna say, okay. If I was on the first, then I'm gonna go backwards behind it, which is gonna be going to the seven. So if I was on uh, this one, we're going from the G back to uh, the F over here to D. Okay. So uh, if we do that, we know that the seventh of the Mixolydian is a 10 note away minor seven. 
Now, how can I prove that? Well, I can count between these notes. There's five. Actually, it's going to be from here to here is five because of the because of the fault line, because of the earthquake shifted up the, the zone. So I have to go up the invisible curve. So five up here, four, three, two. So there's two notes away. So if I went from the F to the G like I would normally see it, when I see that shape, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, that's a two note away uh, major second because the fault line uh, messed it up. Uh, but 12 minus uh, 2 is 10, which would be a 10 note away minor 7. So if I, play the, if I played from the F like I normally would to G, 2 note away uh, major 2nd. But if I went from the G to the F, there's the 10 note away minor 7. All right, let's go back to this one. So now we're going to say we're going to go back to the 6th. Uh, so the sixth of mode number five, Mixolydian, is a uh, is going to be a nine note away major six, and so how can I how can I prove that? Well, if I went if I see this shape, normally I would go from the E to the G, which would be five, uh, which would be five up here, four three. So that would be normally a three note away minor third. It looks like a major third, four note away major third. But because of the fault line, because of the earthquake, it's a minor third, so we have to keep that in mind. So if I'm in between those two, it would be a minor third instead of a major third. Uh, the 12 minus 3 would be a, uh, a 9 note away major 6. So therefore, if I saw that shape, normally I would say, okay, well, from E to G, that would be a, a 3 note away minor third. But if I went from G to A, that distance should be uh, in terms of just tones if it was a circle nine note away major six all right uh, let's go back to the to the the fifth let's go back to the fifth so now I'll be like okay uh, uh, what, 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 what just happened there something funny happened oh I'm going here all right I think I'm back and I'm back let's do this we're at <laughs> This is going to be uh, the fifth of mode number five, Mixolydian, is a seven note away perfect fifth. So how do I know that? Because if I counted from the D, it would be five notes away because of the shift in the tuning. That would just be two, a five note away distance right there. And so, so that, dis, that shape then, if it was five notes away, uh, would be a perfect fourth. It looks like it's a flat fifth or an augmented fourth, but for the earthquake and the fault line, and the inverse would be 12 minus uh, five, which would be seven, seven note away perfect fifth. So if I saw that shape, normally I would measure from the D and say, oh yeah, that's a, uh, that's a four, five note away perfect fourth. And uh, therefore the inverse, if I go this way, is a seven note away perfect fifth. Okay. So then let's go back to this one, going back to the fourth now, measuring from this G to the fourth, which is going to be uh, this C right here. So now we're on the fourth. I've got that properly fingered, I think. All right. So now we're going to say the fourth of mode number five, Mixolydian, is going to be a five note away perfect fourth. How do I know that? Well, I could compare it to the one above it, but I'm comparing now to the one below it. It's going to be 5, then 10 up here because of the fault line, 9, 8, 7. So if I went from C to G, I can see that shape would, would be our 7 note away uh, perfect fifth. And then the inverse of that would be 12 minus 7, which would be a 5 note away perfect fourth. Therefore, if I went from the G back up, five note away uh, perfect fourth okay so then I could say let's go to the third let's go to the third which is here we know that the third of mode number five mixolydian this is the defining interval to say that it is a major mode it's gonna be a four note away a major third which I can see the shape up here but I want to compare it to this shape so if I count this out it would be five 10, 9, 8, so if I went from B to G, it would be an 8 note away 
uh, which would be a minor ninth, and therefore 12 minus 8 is 4, and that's how I get to the 4 note away major third. So if I see that shape, I'm going to say, oh wait, going from the B to the G, that's an 8 note away uh, minor ninth. But if I invert that, G to B, 4 note away major third. All right, let's go to the 2, the 2nd, and bring it on up, bring it on up. And so now we're on the second, which is going to be that A. So the second of mode number five, Mixolydian, a major mode, is going to be a two note away major second. How do I know that? Well, if I count from A down, it would be five, ten. That would be a ten note away because the, it went ten up here because of the kink of the tuning, because of the earthquake, because of the fault line. It would be a ten note away, which would be a minor seven. Twelve minus ten is two, two note away major second. So if I saw this shape, I could say, okay, wait, that's going to be a dun, dun, that's going to be a ten note away minor seven. By the way, it looks a little funky, a little weird, because because you would think that it would be back here, but because of the fault line, uh, it's shifted up to get that ten note away minor seven, and therefore the inverse of that, if I go from G to here. That's going to be a two note away uh, major second. And then we go back then to uh, the octave. So now we've gone in reverse. Now let's go around the horn, around the top. We'll go from here back up to this way. So now I'm going to start on this one down here. Let's analyze the shape. So if I started on this one, I'm starting at what I call the, the two note per string hamburger, the flat, the just one level area here. and uh, where it's hanging out with the A, which is in this case the minor, the main minor, hanging out with its main minor. And then we're going to go then to what I would call the top of this shape, the, the house double stop. So then we're going to the top of the house double stop. Noticing that there's no kink in the tuning, no fault zone between these two. The fault zone is between these two strings. So naturally, when we get out of the hamburger, meat of the hamburger, we go backwards, back a step uh, in our fingering, and then it repeats up top. So now we're going to repeat up top again for this one when we're at the top of the house double stop. And then we get to the bottom of the house double stop back home. So if I count that out then, let's count that out. We're going to say this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and then it repeats. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now let's do the intervals. But first, let me try another joke. This is my, my material here. I'm on the political stuff. So, if, so uh, if I offend anyone, you know, that's part of the part of the joke process. So I, it's, it's, so here we go. Uh, wait, no, I have the wrong one here. Wait a second. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay. I'm a champion. No, I'm a champion. Well, hold on. We can't both be champions. No, dang it. If I, if I'm a, I'm the self-proclaimed champion. Okay. I got this by, by singing someone singing the song. If it was a skit, it's like, I am the champion and so on. And it's like, wait a sec, that doesn't seem fair. Why are you the champion? Okay, okay, we can we can call we can call it a split. We could split the champion title, sharing it 50-50 on the champion. I get the champ part, and you get we can share the P, allowing allowing you to have the P on part of champion. So we can both share being champion, but I get. I get the champ part and then you get the you get the peon part. It's like, okay, wait a second. I'm not taking that deal. Honestly, who do you think I am? Joe Biden negotiating with the Taliban or something? I I, I may not be the the smartest arrow in the quiver, but I'm not that dumb. I mean, you know, speaking speaking of Joe Biden and and dull arrows in the quiver, you know, that that arrow is so dull. Uh, it, 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 it could have been shot by Achilles himself at a wall 
of just butter and 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 it still would have bounced off that's how dull that's how dull due due to the due to the dullness of that dude's devastating dullness anyways i think i need to polish that one down but i i feel like it has potential uh <clears throat> continuing on we're gonna go here from the one to the two so we're going from the first to the second and <clears throat> that's going to be a second of a mixolydian is a two note away major second and we know that uh, 12 minus 2 is 10 therefore the inverse would be a 10 note away uh minor seventh so if i look at that shape i'm going to say going from here to here two note away major second if i went from a back to to the g 10 note away minor seventh all right let's go to the th and we also know let's do this again if i go to the second of mode number five mixolydian i can take the fifth mode minus one because it's four steps away from the related major it gives me f four uh plus two four five six which means we're in the aeolian mode so that a is the start of the aeolian mode if i started from there otherwise known as the main minor mode and uh it's located in this case next to the 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 cool bluesy mixolydian the fifth mode uh because the in in the flat meat of the hamburger area all right let's go to the third let's go to the third so now we have the third now there's no fault line it's important to note between these two strings the fault line is between these two after everything is shifted up all the houses under this are the same it's just the sh this just they've been shifted up down here so the, so that means that the the third is going to be a four note away major third back to the shape that we're used to boom because if i count that up i can say this is going to be five to here and then back to four we don't have that shift up to get like to five notes would be here to here over here so that so that's going to be four note away. so if i invert that we would say it'd be 12 minus four would be an eight note away minor six so if i go from g to b four note away major third inverted b to g that would be an eight note away minor six and then we know that the third of mode number five mixolydian is five minus one which is four plus three four five six seven that's mode number seven the crazy locrian mode now you can't really see the whole house over here because there's only the top bit of it but if I, that same string is up here and you can see that that's at the top of the house, right behind the penthouse of C, it's actually kind of in the attic and that's where the Locrian is. No one really goes up there unless they need something from uh, the Locrian. You've got to watch out and watch yourself. He sits in there with a shotgun. So you got to make sure you knock on the door or he's going to, you might, you might have some problems if, if cause you don't, you don't just walk into Locrian's house without or the attic without like giving some warning i'll tell you what he's crazy so then we're going to go to the next one this is going to be the fourth of the mixolydian this is going to be then the 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 fourth of the mixolydian is a five note away perfect fourth and so we have then five note away perfect fourth i can see that because the there's five notes between the strings 12 minus five is going to be seven which means the inversion is a seven note away perfect eight. so this is our normal shape if i just see that shape i'm like oh yeah that's a five note away perfect fourth but if i went from the c to the g seven note away perfect fifth because the perfects are inverts of each other and we also know that the fourth of mode five mixolydian is five minus one which is four plus four which is eight only seven modes eight minus seven is one giving us absolute mode number one otherwise known as ionian otherwise also known it's got a lot of nicknames this one because it's famous has a bunch of nicknames is uh the major scale so the major scale the ionian mode number one thunder in the hunter i don't know anyway so we're gonna say that if we then say uh that i saw that shape then it would be then this shape would be a uh didn't i already do that i already did that let's go to the next one let's go to the fifth so this is going to be the fifth looks like our normal uh shape uh for a fifth which is a 
power chord, even though it's not very powerful when you're on the high string. You call that a power? That's a power chord, man. That's not, the power has to be up here. No, this is power. This is power. It's a power chord, too. It's powerful, too. So we're going to say then, uh, uh, that's going to be the fifth of mode number five, Mixolydian, is a seven note away, perfect fifth. Inverted. How do I know that? Because I can go five, six, seven. Inverse, 12 minus seven is five. Five note away, perfect fourth. Therefore, if I saw that shape, I'm like, oh yeah, power chord. High pitched power. High pitched power, baby. And But if I invert it from the D to the G, that's gonna be a four note away, uh, perfect fourth. All right, let's do that again up top. This time measuring not to this G, but to this G. So these three are repeating. And now we're going to try to measure it over an octave so we have shapes that are maybe less familiar because we're reaching down a bit more. So I could say let's go back to the third and compare it to this one. So now I'm comparing this to this. And it's like, uh, yeah. And so then it's like, okay, do I have that fingering right? That's a weird looking shape just to hold those two strings down, right? So you're like, how do I know? Well, it's a third. That's going to be, it means that it's a, uh, a four note away major third. I, I could compare it to this one to kind of test that, but I want to compare it to this one. So if I count it from the B, it would be five, 10, uh, 15, and then up here 20 because of the earthquake and 20 minus 12 notes would basically be 10 minus two or eight, which would be an eight note away uh, minor uh, ninth. And if I invert that 12 minus eight is a four note away major third. So if I saw that shape, I'd usually be thinking going from the B to the G, eight note away minor nine. But if I invert it, four note away major uh, third. All right, and then if I went to the fourth, then similarly, we're gonna say, okay, if I just like played those two notes, and by the way, you might be saying, I would never play those two notes, but you, this, if you played a chord and you tried to play some funky chord and you're trying to figure out the relationships of the chords, then it gets a little wonky sometimes, even with just three note chords, cause you're like, okay, Am I measuring which note is the root? Is it inverted? How am I how am I viewing this thing? You know, and so then that's why counting these out, looking at these intervals uh, is useful. Being able to see the inverse is kind of useful so you can analyze what you're doing. But in any case, we know that the fourth of the mode five mixolydian, it's a five note away perfect fourth. And I can count that out by saying, well, what if I went from the C 5, 10, 15, 20, minus 1, 19, only 12 notes. 19 minus 12 is 9 minus 2, which is 7. So that would be a 7 note away perfect fifth. Inverted, therefore, would be 12 minus 7, or 5 note away perfect fourth. So if I saw that shape, that's a 7 note away perfect fifth. You can see that in the bar chord, right? Because if I played that bar chord, then you'd see like, okay, I'm playing that note with the bar and that would be a seven note away. That's the seven note away, perfect fifth. But if I invert it, that would be a five note away, perfect fourth going from the G to the C. All right, let's go to the next one. Otra vez, por favor. And we're gonna say this one is gonna be uh, the, the fifth of mode five mixolydian is a seven note away perfect fifth i can count that out by going okay this is going to be from the d 5 10 15 20 up to here 19 18 17 so from d to g is 17 only 12 notes 17 minus 12 is 7 minus 2 7 minus 2 is 5 therefore from d to g would be a seven note away uh perfect uh fourth inverting that 12 minus uh seven would be a five note away perfect fifth uh wait a sec did i <laughs> i don't know if i got that let me do that again this would be 5 10 f wait 5 10 15 20 19 18 17 
12, 17 minus 12 is 7 minus 2, 7, 6, 5. So that would be a five note away perfect fourth if I went from this D to the G. The inverse, 12 minus 5, would be a seven note away perfect fifth. Therefore, if I went from the G to the D, that would be a seven note away perfect fifth. Okay, makes perfect sense. Now we're moving on to the sixth. We know the sixth. So if I go from this G to that E, the sixth of a, uh, of a mixolydian is a nine note away major sixth, proper interval for a major mode, nine note away uh, major six. And how do I know that? Well, if I count this up, it would be from the E, it would be 5, 10, 15. 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, 5, 4, 3, 3 note away uh, minor third. 12 minus 3 is 9, 9 note away major 6. So if I saw this shape, I'd say I want to start to see that first, most likely from the E's perspective as a 3 note away minor third, which I can then invert to a 9 note away major 6. And then I can say, okay, let's go to the seven. So I'm going to see uh, the seven here to do, do is going to be uh, right there. So we're going to say, okay, that's this one uh, here. There we go. Okay. So then uh, the seventh is a 10 note away minor seven. How do I know that? Well, if I count from the F five, 10, 15, 14, and then 14 minus 12 is basically four minus two, which is two. It should be a two note away major second. And 12 minus two is 10, 10 note away minor seven. So if I saw that shape, first thing I would think is from the F's perspective, two note away major second. But if I invert it from the G's perspective, uh, we have a 10 note away minor seven. And that brings us back to the octave. Now I should go back the other way, but I think I'm getting a little bit tired here. So I'll just kind of noodle around a bit. So usually, like I say, on this mixolydian mode, I often play in the key of A, uh, but uh, you can do the same thing in G. Let me just think about it in the key of A in context with the mixolydian, because like I say, to me, the mixolydian kind of ties itself to that bluesy thing because it's got that flat uh, seven. So this is in the key of A, flat seven, which you can also do in the key of G. Right, so it's got that tensiony sound that's on uh, the fifth. Now, like in the blues, you usually play like the one, four, five, uh, which is one way people seem to, you know, define the blue, just playing one, four, five, whether it be major or minor, major blue or minor blue. But oftentimes when people just say the blues, they usually mean often that you're playing in a major scale and you're playing all dominant uh, fifths, meaning it's not just going to, so, so, so you, meaning you're kind of switching from, from a mixolydian to a mixolydian uh, if you were to go to the one, four, five, but as though they were all uh, dominant fifths, right? Is it kind of how, you, so people, again, people tend to approach it multiple different ways because if I was playing in the key of A, then some people tend to think that they're gonna be playing like this minor scale, but then make it major. And then it's like, well, how would you make it major if it was a minor A? Well, I'd have to make that third go out here. So I'm gonna take this pentatonic, and by the way, I'm not taking the full, I'm taking this pentatonic scale and then making it major by taking that third and then making it a major third, which I can do by reaching up here or bending. And then this one down here, I can bend that one. So then I have my shape I'm used to. I, or I could slide this one up to here. And I can also throw in, with the minor, you can also kind of throw in the bend of that third is going to be one of the major. And then you also have the seven, which I could reach up here to that seven, 
I'm going to flat the 7. So the other thing that ends up happening is we want to flat the 7. So if it was a major if it was a major scale, you'd have the leading tone of the 7 going back to the 8. And the flat 7 is kind of naturally in this minor pentatonic because it's a minor mode and the flat 7 is what uh, the, the mixolydian and the minor have in common. So you can kind of emphasize just by playing that G if you're playing in A major but in the minor shape. You can emphasize that G and then bend this, uh, this note to get it up to here. So so that you so that so that you bend in the third to the fourth seems to be one way to think of it. And then if you do that, if you say, okay, I'm playing this is what I would call position one, but I'm just call but I'm gonna augment it and then call that like uh, and I'm gonna call that like my my the position for the A major, which I'm gonna augment. Uh, then I can also then say, well, well then, and if it was an A major, position one uh, is also you can basically repeat it back here, uh, position one back here. Uh, and then and play kind of that same position, but back here you can play it. Uh, as as the full major position, all all notes in the position. So then, back here, I could play the position one here and augment those two notes, and then and then I can play basically position one again back here, where because usually like that A in position one, if I started from that A, that would be the major pentatonic starting from this. A rather than over here, so so now I'm I'm starting from this A over here, which you would usually be minor, but I'm forcing it into like a mixolydian major, and then over here this would normally be the 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 if I played from here, it would make it the major part of this shape, and I can basically play it again, but I can play all the notes, all seven notes in here. So there it is, and then this note right, here, and then, and then when I get to uh, my my A, I don't have I don't want that leading tone to get to the A because I can then throw in I can throw in the seven. So if I'm up here, I'm thinking I'm in A major now, but I want to find that G, and the G is the one I can throw in here because the G is going to be the flat seven and i also with the uh if you're playing in the key of a you've got this open g right here that you can kind of throw in the mix and you have this open a so that's kind of interesting because i can see myself in this kind of kind of uh shape right here which is like my normal my normally my minor shape but i'm playing from here making it major and then i've got this open a so I can play that open A there, and then I can alternate up here, which is in my shape, and I can alternate to here, which is outside of my shape, but that's that G that's gonna that would give it the transforming it from a from a major to a to a mixolydian. So. And here's a G up here. Also gonna give it that kind of bluesy kind of sound or that flat 70 sound that is weird for the major scale, right? So I have something. I do that for up here I can kind of mirror that when I go to if I wanted to go then to the D because I'm playing the one four five in the key of A and mirror that same shape back to the A the one 
then I could do the same for the E because I have an open E here. Back to the D. To the A. So that's kind of an interesting way to see it. And then the, another way people seem to see the bluesy thing is the, with the Ricci method, which means you're usually thinking of three notes per string. So if I started on this A, I have these three, these three, and then, and then this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then normally the seven would be up here, but there's that flat seven. That I could reach to. So that's pretty reachy, and that's where you get this shuffle pattern thing, which I play, and some people would play it like this. But then it's hard to reach that flat seven. You can almost reach it, and that's why I'm trying to hold my guitar up top, up, up like this, which is a little bit easier to reach. So if I hold it up like this, like a classical guitar player, and then I reach with this finger to this finger instead of this finger, then it's a little bit easier to reach and maybe even to the to up to there. So I'm not really an uh, expert at this because I, I always felt like my hands weren't big enough for this, but I'm seeing little women <laughs> play these classical things and reaching, and if they can do it <clears throat> with hands, with their hands, then I should be able to do <laughs> it. Got, got no excuses. We can repeat that here. Up here. So, so, so that's that three note per string one. And then of course I can see, it, and instead of seeing it, uh, w you can also look at it as it's a major scale. So a lot of people I think also see it, well, instead of playing this minor scale and augmenting it, I'm just gonna see it as a major scale because it, people know the major scale, which is what I would call position number, uh, pos uh, position number two, but this time this is gonna be the major, right? So then, so if that's the case, you'd play right there, but then flat the seven, and the seven's right there. That's the leading tone to go back in. So, so when you're thinking like that, you're just like, oh, now I'm gonna play with this seven. And you might be able to throw in a flat seven and that leading tone, right? So just because it's kind of sloppy, the blues is kind of like a, kind of like a wonky house. It's got some crooked timbers in there, but as long as it's structurally sound, it sounds pretty cool. The wonk is, the wonk is nice as long as it's as long as the thing holds up. So you can think of it that way, or of course we can just say, well, I'm in the mixolydian, and if you're in the mixolydian, then you're not going to have that uh, leading tone. You're going to have the seven back here, which means you don't have the leading tone. So if I think about it that way. I can say, I can say, well, I'll do this, and then sometimes maybe I'll throw in the major seven just to add the wonkiness. So instead of taking out the major seven to add wonkiness, I throw in the major seven to add a little wonk. So, so then you can kind of mix all that stuff together, kind of. Now, now the other thing that if I think about this as the the mixolydian uh the mixolydian mode then that would be like position what i would call number five which again is kind of interesting because then you would have this is what i would be calling mix mixolydian mode number five and that means that over here the next mode up would be mode number one which is also kind of a useful way to see it because a lot of people know mode number one. So then I can play this as mode number one. 
again, which would be my rock and roll pentatonic, or if I add all the notes. So right, but then I'm good. But then my A uh, is is gonna be my point of focus, which is a little funny because I'm not totally used to playing. I'm used to playing this shape as though that that note would be my minor, that would be my major, and then this would be my mixolydian, which is equivalent to kind of what uh, it's kind of similar to what we've been doing here or what I would be doing if I was in position one on the G, right? If I was in position one over here, the G would be the mixolydian. So I'm over here and now I'm like, okay, this would be like pos position one. And I'm trying to emphasize that A.
That's good.